Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I will show one subtle difference between CBC and the CBC Mac. So the structure that you're seeing is CBC structure. And as you can see here, the sender will encrypt the message using his or her key, uh, and they will send the ciphertext to the receiver. The receiver will uh, decrypt using the same key, uh, as you can see here. We have talked about encryption and decryption process earlier. But the point is that the ciphertext is sending clear text from one end to another end, of course. But if you now go back to CBC Mac, you don't see the ciphertext sent to the uh, receiver. Only the last block is sent, of course. The reason being that the receiver will, will use the, the plain text again to, to run it and then compute the result and to compare against the incoming result. If there is a mismatch, then the Mac failure happens. Okay. But why is CBC Mac, we are not sending the intermediate result? Okay. Intermediate ciphertext is not sent, right? You see here, the first block XR with zero uh, produces some ciphertext, but that ciphertext is never sent. That directly goes to the uh, XR of the next block and so on. Only the last ciphertext is sent. So what happens if you make that intermediate ciphertext public? It turned out that is a very bad idea to uh, expose the intermediate ciphertext. Okay, let me now show to you a concrete attack. Okay, so in this case, now I'm uh, using the proper IV, meaning IV is set to zero. That is what we need for CBC Mac. And I will show you one attack where exposing the intermediate ciphertext will get into a problem. Okay, more specifically, as you can see here, I'm not supposed to expose C1, C2. I'm only ex allowed to expose the Mac. Okay, but if I expose, what will happen? It turned out that the attack is easy if you expose it. One attack is as follows. What if I just replace as an attacker, replace P2 by uh, P1 XR C1. The attacker knows it because P1 and the C1 are in clear text anyways. So if I replace P2 by P1 XR C1, uh, during the uh, MAC verification, the receiver will take P1, send it to encryption function, MAC function, whatever encryption function like AES, outputs the C1, that C1 gets XR'd with P1 XR C1. C1 and C1 will cancel out, so you'll get P1 here. And then, of course, the sender has to, uh, attacker has to insert another block here, P2. Okay, now the attacker has obtained a valid tag T for a different message. So let me write it more formally here. Originally, sender was sending P1, P2, Pn, N blocks, right? What is the tag? Tag was T. Right, this is the tag T. What is the new corrupted plain text is P1. But the second block is interesting, is P1 XR with C1. The third block is P2. Okay, so totally N plus one blocks. But what is the resulting ciphertext for uh, resulting MAC for this particular um, plain text? It's also T, interestingly, because of the XR property I just mentioned. The C1 will get canceled out with C1. So you'll get P1 XR with. Uh, yeah, C1 got it cancelled out. P1 directly send it to um, AES or whatever block cipher. So you will get C1 here during the MAC verification phase. But then we are inserting the P2. That means it's exactly same as the previous scenario. So we end up with the same tag T. So what we have proved here is that uh, given one message and attack, we can construct another message with the same tag without even having the key K. Okay, that's basically MAC forgery. Okay, so the point here is that we should not be exposing the intermediate ciphertext when we are using CBC MAC, and it's perfectly fine. Oftentimes, we have to do it for regular CBC. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much.